Let's get more on the story. We're joined by Peter Matthews, who's Professor of Political Science and author of Dollar Democracy with Liberty and Justice for Some, joining us from Los Angeles in California. Thank Many you. thanks for joining us, Peter. Uh, I believe some of these electoral uh, college voters have even received death threats. I mean, what are the chances that these electors will vote their own way and go against the mandate of the people in their state? I think the chances are quite small, actually. They'll need 37, 37 electors, Republican electors, to switch over to the Democratic side, Hillary, and for her to be able to win this over Trump. And I think only one, one Republican elector has come out publicly. He's from Texas and said that he's not going to be supporting Trump. He's the only so-called faithless elector. But we've got to go back to history a little bit. Alexander Hamilton, one of the founders, in Federalist Paper Number 68, he set up the reason for the Electoral College. He said that in case the public chooses the wrong person out of misinformation or whatever, a passion, that a group of selected people, selected by the, the leaders of the country, would be able to actually vote for the presidency and make a much more reasoned judgment. Now, that's, that'll go down very hard with the Trump supporters if the electors switch over and vote for Hillary. Although Hillary won three million more votes, approximately three million more votes than Donald Trump, popular votes, the way the system is set up, the electoral votes are the only ones that count, and it's based on per state electoral count. So the smaller states, the rural states, actually have the numerical advantage because each state has two senators, for which there are two electors, in addition to the House electors, and it doesn't matter what population the state has. So the states that are smaller in number have more numbers of electors in the Electoral College than their population would warrant. So it does have a small bias toward the rural states and smaller states where Donald Trump did very well, actually. It's, it's a very big conundrum right now, but I don't think it's going to be switching over and, and flipping to, uh, Donald, to Hillary Clinton. Uh, that's, that's my educated guess. You don't know what could happen. Uh, OK, uh, but no. looking ahead, I mean, given we've seen this sort of discrepancy happen, do you think that we could see the entire system change? Because there have been calls for it to be scrapped. Oh, absolutely. In fact, it's happened twice. When Al Gore was not elected, uh, although he got more popular votes, and again this time, within 20, less than 20 years, it's happened twice. And there have been many calls to just abolish the Electoral College, and I believe that would be a good move, and I think that we may see some movement here. It will take a constitutional amendment, which means that uh, two-thirds of the House and the Senate have to vote for the amendment to propose it, and three-fourths of the states have to ratify it. That's the main way of doing it. So that's also a tough call, but a lot of popular pressure now. The majority of Americans actually want to abolish the Electoral College, about a little over 50% say they should abolish it and let the people decide. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens. This is probably the only one election which brought the, this whole issue of the Electoral College uh, to the forefront like no other election before. In terms of this system today, I mean, who exactly are these electors? I mean, what is their job? What are they supposed to do? These electors are mostly appointed by the state parties. They're very loyal people to the party candidate. And they cannot be a senator or a congressman, but they can actually be an elected official or an activist. And they're all there from each state based on population. And most of them are going to vote with the party. They're totally loyal to it. They've been in the party all their lives. They go to party meetings regularly. And they probably are concerned about repercussions if they vote against the party and choose uh, Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump, for example. That's why only one Republican elector said that he is not going to vote for Donald Trump. And there's an open possibility he'll vote for some other Republican, not even for Hillary. So to get 37 electors uh, who are Republican to switch over is a virtual impossibility. I think the whole system has to be looked at again, and the Electoral College should be done away with, as we did with the U.S. Senators. We elect now U.S. Senators with direct popular vote since the 17th Amendment almost 100 years ago, and we need another amendment for the presidency to have a popular vote election, as most countries do. I believe Turkey has a popular vote election for president. France does, and many other countries have a popular vote. No Electoral College. Uh, and briefly, brief, briefly, Peter, uh, for those who are desperate to hear a result today, they, they, that, that's not going to be the case, is it? You're gonna, they're going to have to wait uh, at least a few weeks. They're going to have to wait. January the 6th is when we'll, the electoral votes will be opened up in the Senate, and Joe Biden will be actually counting them officially and reporting in front of the senators and the members of Congress on January 6th. So it's quite a few, a couple of weeks more before we can even know how these folks will vote tomorrow. Okay. Very interesting. OK, many thanks for your time. Peter Matthews there, Professor of Political Science, joining us there live from Los Angeles.